Good morning, friends, and welcome to Friday. Thanks so much for joining us here on Up With Krim. I'm Channing Curtis. Well, speaking of Friday and, of course, the weekend ahead, myself and Thomas Patrick, I know we are ready for the weekend already. We're always looking forward to the weekend because <laughs> it means that not only do you get to sleep in, but you get to get out and enjoy, like, the sunshine that we'll have this weekend, right? Mm-hmm. And <laughs> honestly, these last three days, it's been nice to not use the air conditioning, but this weekend, hey, the summer weather is going to be back for the region and kind of the nicer summer weather, unlike what's happening happening you know, in the middle part of the country. I've been hearing how hot it's been. That's because there's what's called a uh, ring of fire or a just an intense ridge of heat, the heat dome, if you will. You can almost see the swirl of moisture just on Doppler radar with that heat dome just centered and parked right in the middle of the country. But let's go back at home here in the Pacific Northwest. We can actually see a bit of some rain and showers. We'll zoom in even further over uh, northern Oregon and southern Washington. This latest batch of rainfall is heading northward and that will give us our second chance of rain this week. We'll take it, but we'll be cautious of any kind of thunderstorms that are possible through the midday hours today. At 602, two destructive wildfires are still burning in Spokane County this morning, but now crews are starting to get a better handle on both of them. The Oregon Road fire has burned more than 11,000 acres and is now 11% contained. Yesterday, many evacuations were lowered. However, level three go now evacuations do still remain in parts of Spokane County. There are nearly a thousand people and half a dozen aircraft fighting this fire around the clock. The fire has killed one person and burned an estimated 80 buildings. The cause of this fire is under investigation. It's now been one week since those wildfires in Spokane County forced thousands of people to evacuate from their homes. And today a resource center will open for those affected by the destruction left behind by the flames. And so our Crim 2's Brandon T. Jones is standing by live from Spokane Falls Community College with more details on what residents should know and how can they get assistance today. Good morning, Brandon. Yeah, good morning, Channing. And of course, we know that Spokane Falls has served as a shelter for individuals that have been impacted by the wildfires. But today at noon, they will open their doors as the county's disaster assistance center. So people impacted by either the Gray Fire or the Oregon Road Fire can come here. They get their answers question. Those who come here for that purpose can expect information from several agencies that will be on site. That includes the Office of the Insurance Commissioner, the State Department of Social and Health Services, and the United Methodist Committee on Relief, among other organizations and agencies. The purpose of this location is to serve as a one-stop shop to answer any questions about the, what the recovery process looks like if your home or property was destroyed by flames. As of this morning, the Great Fire has burned more than 10,000 acres. It's 58% contained and is estimated to have destroyed 259 structures. Also this morning, we're expecting an update on what that containment is for the Great Fire. So as soon as we get that information, we'll go ahead and relay that to you as well. But once again, the Disaster Assistance Center will open here at Spokane Falls Community College at 12 p.m. later in this day and it'll be open until 6 p.m. For now, reporting live in Spokane County, Brandon T. Jones, Crim 2 News. The defense team for the man accused of murdering four University of Idaho students has filed another motion to dismiss the grand jury indictment against him. Brian Koberger's defense argues that the indictment should be dismissed for a number of reasons, including the grounds of biased grand jury and prosecutorial misconduct. This comes just days after the defendant waived his right to a speedy trial, meaning that the trial will no longer happen in October as planned. The judge will hear the motion at the defendant's next hearing, which is a week from today. 605 as for our weather forecast this morning, not nearly as cool as it has been the last couple mornings for the inland northwest. Bit of cloud cover, bit of moisture starting to move in responsible for a bit of that. So we're seeing a few temperatures already in the 60s, a, a bit more mild compared to say yesterday or the day before. But that cloud cover and even rainfall or even thunderstorms this afternoon is going to cap off the maximum temperatures into the upper 70s or lower 80s if we get a bit more sunshine. But look for between about noon and four o'clock today to be the most likely time frame for any kind of rain in the Spokane area. Meanwhile, air quality conditions remain in that moderate category. 
category and only just. We're still seeing plenty of good and moderate category conditions all across the inland northwest this morning. Nothing uh, anticipated to change in that metric for the next two days. So air quality stays acceptable for the time being.